Hi everyone, Jeremy here. Thanks for watching today. This video is a masculine inspired make. I've had a request to make a thank you card and the recipient is known for wearing brightly coloured suits, bow ties and is always dressed for the occasion. No specialty dyes are required to make this card. However, I'm using additional products to add a finishing touch. So I'm going to be using the Textures Quintessential Quilting Embossing Folder. I've got some pattern paper. So I've decided on this yellow stripe and this yellow polka dot. And in my stash, I found uh, an old bow die set. So I'm going to be using that. I believe it's from Sizzix, but this was one of the first dies that I bought. And that was before I used to label everything. So I'm sorry I can't um, tell you the exact name on that one. I've also got some yellow cardstock and some blue cardstock. My idea is to make a 5x7 waistcoat and dicky bow card. To make the card base, you'll need a piece of 12 by 7. Along the 12 inch side, we're going to score it 5 and 10. For the waistcoat, you'll need a piece of 4 and 3 quarters by six and three quarters. So I have my card base and I'm gonna fold and burnish on the score lines. So every fold is a mountain fold. Give that a good burnish. So the card will open and close like so. As you can see, as I'm closing my card up, I've got a little bit of buckling here. See that on the side there? So I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm going to take 1 16th off the edge here. And now that folds perfectly, so I'm happy with that. So just set that aside for the time being. You'll need to grab a pencil and a ruler and along the five and three quarter side we're going to mark at one, one and three quarters and two and a half. Then on the one and a quarter marker, we're going to mark up two inches. So you want to make sure that that's nice and straight and mark at the two inch point there. So I'm just going to draw a line from the outer markers. I don't know if you can see that. So I've got a triangle shape. Then along the bottom edge, I'm going to mark at one and a half, one and three quarters, and two. Then on the one and three quarter marker, you want to mark up one inch. If you want, you can use the marker at the top. Make sure they're following the same line. And mark up one inch. I'm then going to draw the triangle shape again. Connecting the two outer markings that we made. So we've got a triangle on the top there and a triangle on the bottom there. So you could use a craft knife if you wish 
I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut out the two triangles. So there we go, you'll end up with a piece like so. I'm just going to remove any pencil marks that I may have left behind. Then taking your card base, you can unfold it. So we've got the two inch um, piece here. And we're going to come in three quarters of an inch from the right hand side and make a mark. And then along this outer edge here, we're going to come down two inches and make a mark there. Line the two markings up together. And draw a line and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut along that line and again removing any pencil marks so the card will fold as so we then have our waistcoat piece in the middle there and then this edge will fold over the top there. Next I want to cut a white piece of cardstock that will hide these openings and it will give the illusion of a shirt. So I'm going to trim a piece to two by six and three quarters. that will sit nicely behind that panel there. The next thing I want to do is emboss my waistcoat. So as I said I'm going to be using the Textures Quintessential Quilting Embossing Folder. I'm just going to line that up that looks about right so if you're using a thicker cardstock you might want to spritz it with some water and then that will loosen some of the fibres and you'll get a better imprint um, but I'm using about a 220 GSM so I think it'll be fine without the water so next I'm going to add my white panel to the back of this blue card and then I'm going to use some foam adhesive to pop that on the front there. So my little tip when using foam adhesive if you're covering a large surface area is I like to add some liquid glue to the back of the foam and then this helps me to line it up exactly in place so with that liquid glue on top of the foam we've got some wiggle room whereas without it it'll just be an instant stick and then you can't move it around so I'm just lining that up in place I'm happy with that. Next I'm going to add the buttons to the card and for the size that I wanted I've just decided to use a standard hole punch so I'm just going to stick the corner in there and punch three holes. Actually I think I'm going to go for a fourth hole. There we go, I think that looks quite nice. I'm just going to add a drop of glue, pop those in place. So 
so I don't know if you're catching that on camera but I've got a little bit of a glue smudge there I'm just going to go in with my glue eraser and just take that away now it's less visible so if you haven't got one of them or you're new to crafting this is a godsend when I first started crafting um, I didn't have one of these in my stash and I used to throw card after card away because they were glue smudges and I'm a bit of a perfectionist so if there was something that you could see I'd throw it in the bin and then start again so I'm glad I now have this so I can just remove any of those imperfections. So I've got my pattern paper, my mini die cutting machine and my dies here. So I'm just going to decide the sort of orientation that I want for the pattern paper. So I think I'm going to have my back piece as this um, mini polka dot and then the main bow a striped pattern. This is the centre of the bow tie, so I'm just going to place that on there as well. So I'll need to cut this twice, so that's why I've cut the extra piece there. So the die cutter machine I'm using is from Made to Surprise. And as you're um, taking it through, there's not much tension on this so I, I thought that it wasn't going to cut through but as you can see it perfectly cuts through another little tip there if your die cut piece is stuck in the die just throw it down on your desk and it'll pop straight out So I've got my two little bow pieces here. I'm going to just use my bone folder to give them a curl. Using this die takes me back to when I first started making cards. I used to embellish all of my cards with, with this particular bow. I haven't used it for such a long time. I'm just adding a little glue on this piece here, folding it over. Adding that pressure then to hold it in place. So I'm just making sure that my pieces are in the centre and equally spaced. I'm just placing that down in the centre of the shirt but I'm also mindful of this edge here so I don't want to um, overlap them. So there's the finished card. I'm not going to add a sentiment on camera because I want to add a personalised message and then also off camera I'll be cutting a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters and I'll add a message inside there. So the card does stand up, sorry it's a little close to camera, like so. So thank you very much for watching today, I hope you've enjoyed my take on a masculine thank you card. If you've enjoyed watching today's video please give me a like or a comment or you may consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.